Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, the place where we review primarily budget folders, but other stuff as well. This guy retailed $40, 40 US dollars, $39.99 at White Mountain Knives. <laughs> they don't have any in stock right now, but if they did, you could get 10% off, which means $35.99 for a Tucson knife with a 14C28N blade. G10 handle scales. This is a well-made knife uh, for that price. Uh, the owner of uh, White Mountain Knives told me they're getting more in stock. He's just not sure exactly when, and he's not exactly sure which models. But on the link down below, uh, you can go to the page for this. There's a link that says notify me. You click on it, put in your email address, and they will email you when it's back in stock. If you just can't wait, uh, if you're in the United States anyways, you can get this thing at Amazon as well. It's 45 US dollars there, 45.99 plus 4.49 for shipping because it'll ship from China. So without any further ado, let's look at the review coming at you right now. So there she is. I'll give it a little twirl first. Nice deep pocket clip. Look at all that nice milling. Size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. There you go. Yeah, it's not as big as the Ontario Rat 1. It's a little bit shorter in the handle, not a lot, and a little bit shorter in the blade. But like I always like to say with the Ontario Rat 1, the uh, cutting edge length is almost the exact same length. So you can easily get a smaller knife than the Ontario Rat 1 and still have just as much real estate on your blade. But the Ontario Rat 1 is a very nice knife. So what do we call this? Um, even though there's a belly here, I'm still going to call this a Warncliffe. It's, it's close enough to being straight that, yeah, we'll call it a Warncliffe. Get that nice little divot up here, tiny little swedge along there. And a big swedge all the way across the spine of the blade. Huge jimping there. It's not uh, sharp at all. It's not hot in the hand at all. A funky kind of, well not funky, a different kind of sharpness choil there. But very nicely, it's easy to sharpen this knife up to here. Well, it will be, I can just tell, uh, without getting into the plunge there. On the Ricasso on this side, it says 14C28N, and there's the uh, designer's mark. Night morning design. It is a bright red handle, black up here. I have not seen it in any other color combinations, uh, but this is the G10 version. Uh, there is a titanium version, but I don't know where you're going to find it. I'll, if I do find it, I'll leave links. Full flat grind. Very nice. The flipper, you know, it's got jimping on the side of it too. There's some, uh, not jimping. <laughs> the flipper has chamfering on the side of it there. And the jimping's up here, just three little ones for the uh, light switch traction. And that method works just fine to deploy the blade. And uh, it's a nice flat top there, so it's easy to uh, just push back, but on a slight angle. And it works with the push button method as well. Lockup on this guy, very good. Lockup's awesome. There's just a slight chamfer on the side of the liner bar right here, and a little bit more cut out here on that uh, choil, so that you can get your thumb in there really easily to you know, pull the liner out of the way when you want to close the knife. So that works very well, and it's quite effective in either the right or left hand. Works just great for me. The pocket clip, though, is left side, oh, right side only, but 
this pocket clip. Uh, some of the pictures I've seen online, and uh, there's an Amazon listing for this, they've got either a steel or a milled titanium pocket clip that looks very different from this. But this is the deep carry pocket clip, which I quite like. And it comes flat over there, so it works very well to get into the pocket. Although we've got button screws there, uh, it, there's a lot of clearance there for it to go into a pocket. Let's demonstrate. Climbs over right away, no problem at all, and goes to the full depth very easily. Just a tiny bit of red sticking out there. Not an awful lot. So the pocket clip, I like this deep carry, po deep carry pocket clip, but I suspect I would like the other pocket clip probably just as much. Notice something that's missing? You guys who like uh, lanyards, yeah, there's no lanyard hole here. The end of the handle here has got uh, you know, two little divots on either side. This little decorative effect. The backspacer is about the half length, a little over half length backspacer. It's got large jimping on it, just like the large jimping up here. So it kind of echoes that. And, you know, with this curved back here, it fits into the palm very well. Oh, don't know what's going on with my voice. I'm having to clear it quite a lot today. I do have allergies, and they do bug me quite a lot. Um, lots of room up here. There's no jimping. When your thumb's up here, yeah, it doesn't really need it. You get a good grip on it. The jimping's just there for the rest, and that's fine. No problem with that at all. Nothing negative to say. These uh, two body screws here, these are T8s. And this screw on this side's uh, T6. It just holds the G10 onto the liner. So uh, that's kind of good. Um, the liners on the inside, they've got a lot of skeletonizing. Why don't we take a look at that right now? Here's the knife taken apart so you can clearly see a lot of skeletonization that helps with the weight. They've got excellent screws, which is common for Tucson. Uh, there's the hidden stop pin there, ceramic ball bearings, ceramic detent. Uh, there's a nice little ramp right there for the detent. Technically a free spinning pivot pin, but I've never had a problem with any of my Tucson knives with the uh, pivot spinning while I'm trying to take them apart. And this was no different, worked just perfectly. And nice, thin, light G10 backspacer that helps give this thing a lot of light weight. With all the contours on the G10 there, uh, they really couldn't have made it much thinner without uh, making it weak. Other, another thing, look at that. Look how thin that line is there. Yep, they're using wire EDM technology to cut out their uh, liners. $40 and you save 10%, so 36 US dollars for this knife. It, it's amazing. So yeah, that's quite nice, uh, especially ceramic all over the place for that inside. Good action, very smooth. Detent is very nice. Stays closed when you want it to stay closed and opens well when you want it to open, so that's a good thing. You've got chamfering on the edges of the G10 here. Just a little bit of something, something to uh, make it feel comfortable in the hand. I did a lot of testing with this knife, as I do with all knives. Didn't find it hot at all. Um, I thought this spot was going to bug me. On some knives, it bugs me when you've got a huge forward choil, because it turns out your middle finger, at least mine, often ends up right on there. And it does on this one as well. But this time, I don't know why, it didn't seem to bug me. So there you go. Uh, various grips, the reverse grip, comfortable. Even a reverse pull grip is comfortable. Uh, you know, fist grip or saber grip, you know, delicate work grip. That little divot up there is perfect for me to put my fingertip in there and I could use, have control to do tiny little cuts on stuff. Tip is quite durable. You can see that starting right there is where it starts coming thinner down to the point. 
Uh, when I took the picture of it being uh, aligned like this, of course, yeah, I can't focus in on you know the tip here. If I do that, everything else is out of focus. So I focused on the liners, and you can see it's almost centered perfectly. It's a little off to that side. Not a big deal. I don't mind. It doesn't come close to rubbing anywhere, so that's not an issue. It's a two-sun knife with uh, 14C28N. It's bright, which, you know, sometimes that's a really good thing. Sometimes you want a knife that's kind of in disguise, and sometimes you like having a nice bright knife. It's not a lot of weight. Let's go over all the dimensions and specs and stuff on that. This will be on the screen while I'm talking about those things. Oh, I didn't measure, although <laughs> I put it on a different piece of paper. The uh, weight of the knife is on the screen. The factory sharpness, that's on the screen right here. Anything lower than 200 is considered quite sharp. The length now, the cutting edge length, 8.45 centimeters, 3.33 inches. Blade length tip to the closest spot on the handle, 8.79 centimeters, 3.46 inches, three and a half inches basically. The blade thickness, 3.69 centimeters, that's 0.145 inches, so over an eighth of an inch thick. The blade depth, 3.01 centimeters, 1.19 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, 0.46 millimeters, 18 thousandths of an inch, so nice and thin, very good. Uh, 14C28N can handle being that thin, no problem. The uh, grind angles, 15.6 degrees, and it's quite consistent along the length of it. And on this side, 20.5 degrees, again, quite consistent. So a decent sharpener, but it's invariable. <laughs> Different one side to another. That just happens when they're hand sharpened. The handle now, the handle length, 11.19 centimeters. That's 4.41 inches. The uh, grip area between my thumbs, it's roughly nine and a half centimeters. That's about 3.7 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.6 centimeters. That's 0.63 of an inch, but it feels less than that because that's just two little raised spots and the rest is inset a little bit thinner, so it's comfortable. The handle depth, 2.87 centimeters, 1.13 inches. And when the knife's closed, the knife depth is largest right here, 3.87 centimeters, 1.52 inches. And the total length when the blade's deployed tip to tail, 19.96 centimeters, 7.86 inches. And yes, I do all of my own measurements because the specs online aren't always accurate. Like I said, the cost for this thing, $39.99 at White Mountain Knives. So a $40 knife, US dollars, that's just amazing. Um, I didn't find any Canadian source for this, but you can buy White Mountain Knives does deliver to Canada and they do deliver um, every time I've ordered from them. The packages have gotten through totally un, uh, unmolested by anybody. So that's a good thing. Of course, I can't guarantee that every package will get through past customs, but uh, they just seem to come through just fine. I haven't found this knife on any other sites around the world, but uh, if you find them, leave me a link in the comments. I do get links. I just have to uh, post them up. Ooh, that reminds me, I have not checked the uh, links that are, the, the comments that are held back. Sometimes some comments are held back by YouTube. I haven't checked those in a couple of weeks. I just realized that. Sorry about that, guys. If you've left a comment, but it didn't get up on, like it didn't actually get posted, uh, that's my bad. Sorry about that. I should be checking that more regularly. Sometimes I forget. Unique features of this knife? Well, just the little styling cues. You know, that little piece of divot right there. The, the little things that they do in the back of the handle there. It, it's just a cool knife. I, I, I kind of like it. it. The handle's comfortable. It's not hot in the hand. I did extended cutting, works quite well. Um, you know, the swedge here helps give it a good look. It's got a nice grind to it. Nice plunge, great sharpness choil. The flipper works well. Liner lock release is good. Like I said, the detent's great. 
and it's got smooth action from those ceramic ball bearings. Pocket clip is more than adequate. I quite like it. The cons for this knife? Um, I didn't find any. <laughs> uh, you know, I like to, you know, if I have to be nitpicky, I'm nitpicky. There's nothing on here that I really didn't like, well, except for maybe, you know, some people would like a left-hand pocket clip. You know, I grew up left-handed, so there's that. Uh, I don't mind carrying right-handed knives on the left side. I've gotten used to it over time, so it really doesn't bug me. And very often, uh, right-handed pocket clips in the left hand are more comfortable. That way you don't get the pocket clip in the palm of your hand, and it's just more comfortable this way, at least for me. It's comfortable this way as well, but sometimes if the pocket clip is in a sort of odd shape or something, then the fingertips don't like it in the left hand. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty much ambidextric, ambidextrous with knives and so and with a lot of other things, so that's really not a, a concern. So I like this knife. Great price if it can be found. The thing is, it's not commonly found right now. It is a design that's older. They're TS50, like it, and their model numbers are just sequential. They're in the 200s, the mid 200s, and late 200s already with their model numbers. So they've done another 150 some odd knives after this one, 100, probably 200 knives after this one already. So it might not be a knife that you can find, uh, but if you can find it somewhere, you know, maybe you want to grab it. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make a big difference. Uh, even if you want to go shopping on Amazon for something else, if you start off with one of my Amazon links, that does help me out. Uh, so thank you so much for that. And uh, don't forget to use coupon codes that I've got down there for stores like uh, White Mountain Knives, 10% off with code CCE, IntegrityKnives.com, a knife store in Canada, 10% off with code CCE. And, uh, you know, just look down below. There's more, more information and more links and more coupon codes as well. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.